Recently, a Christian rally in Uganda featuring two former sheikhs attracted 35 Muslim converts over two days. Today I will look at the type of arguments they used, report on the Muslim response to the conversions, and survey the present situation in Uganda. Starting on May 20, 2019, an open-air outreach to Muslims was held in the Ugandan town of Bwera, near its western border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Featuring former Muslim speakers, the event attracted a strong reaction. Morning Star News reports, Jesus changed my life when I acknowledged him as my Lord and being the Son of the Most High God. One former sheikh, a Muslim teacher, testified, This testimony touched many people, and large numbers showed up for the following day, many of them putting their faith in Christ, church leaders said. In all, 35 Muslims put their faith in Christ. Another former sheikh, on the second day of the event, used the Quran to argue for the uniqueness of Jesus. It's true, even the Quran acknowledges the uniqueness of Jesus, called Issa, and his superiority to Muhammad. The Quran teaches Jesus' virgin birth and says he will be, quote, distinguished in this world and the hereafter, Surah 3, 45. His mother Mary is the only woman mentioned by name in the Quran. Muhammad, in contrast, had an ordinary birth, and his parents are not in the Quran. Indeed, according to the Hadith, Muhammad's parents are in hell. The Quran teaches that Jesus was sinless. Muslims try to claim the same for Muhammad, but contradict the Quran when they do so. In three separate places, the Quran commands Muhammad to ask forgiveness for his sins which obviously means that he sinned. For example, Surah 40, 55 states, So be patient, O Muhammad. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth, and ask forgiveness for your sin, and exalt with praise of your Lord in the evening and the morning. According to the Quran, Jesus was spared death and taken directly up into heaven. Meanwhile, Muhammad died a painful death after three years in agony. He also wasn't assured of heaven. Say, I am not something original among the messengers, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I only follow that which is revealed to me, and I am not but a clear warner. Likewise in the Hadith, Though I am the apostle of Allah, yet I do not know what Allah will do with me. Jesus is given the title Messiah in the Quran, and predicted to come again in the last days in numerous hadith. Muhammad receives no special title and will not return. In Surah 3.45 and 4.171, Jesus is called a word from Allah and his word, a title no doubt borrowed from Christianity without understanding the theology. In Surah 4.171, Jesus is also called a spirit from Allah. Muhammad is not similarly associated with Allah. All three of these titles, Messiah, Word, and Spirit, imply Jesus' divinity. If Muslims believe the Quran, they need to acknowledge the superiority of Jesus over Muhammad. Sadly, many local Muslims reacted predictably. The report continues. Offended Muslims began mobilizing and more than 250 Muslims armed with long swords and clubs showed up at the event on May 25th in anticipation of attacking. Hundreds of Muslims marched to Buera police station, led by several Islamist leaders issuing threats and calling for the meetings to be banned, organizers said. We cannot allow the Christians to use the Quran in their meetings or to allege that Jesus is the Son of God. This is a serious blasphemy to Muslims, said the head of the mosque in Buera. Yeah, shame on those Christians for reading the Quran. We wouldn't want any Muslims to know what the Quran actually teaches. That might cause them to leave Islam. The angry Muslims proceeded to send threatening text messages to the event's speakers. Tomorrow we are coming to kill all of you during the open-air crusade read one text message. I can't imagine where they got such a weird idea from. 
the punishment of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger, and strive with might and main for mischief through the land, is this, execution or crucifixion. The event organizers wanted to continue the multi-day event anyway, but the police decided to end it early over safety concerns. Christianity has an interesting history in Uganda. Islamic missionaries were the first to arrive in the country, and for a while drew some interest from the Bugandan king. However, without the power of the sword to convert, they saw minimal results. Christians were late on the scene, not arriving till 1877, making Buganda among the last African countries to receive missionary efforts. By 1900, efforts were starting to produce results, with an estimated 180,000 converts to Christianity compared to about 50,000 for Islam. In the 1920s and 30s, a local-led revival broke out and the Christian population exploded. By 1970, Uganda was 65% Christian. In the 1970s, a Muslim dictator came to power. He managed to drive out the small Baha'i population and other Asians, but his violence also helped speed the conversion from native religions to Christianity. Today, the country is roughly 84% Christian, 12% Muslim, 2% native religions, and 2% miscellaneous. However, Muslims dispute this. Muslims are 25% of the population, not 13.7%. Haj Mutamba, a spokesperson of the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, told local media, We have two to four wives, and we are producing about six children in the space of two to three years. How lovely. Islamic subjugation of women to baby-making machines hard at work, and acting as a source of boasting for local Muslims. Uganda officially has a secular government, and its constitution protects religious freedom, including the right to evangelize. Unfortunately, Uganda also has a history of violence against Christians, with more than 200,000 documented martyrs. Overall, it gets a 6 out of 10 on religious freedom based on UN criteria. 35 converts might not seem like a big deal, but we're talking about over two days in a town of 50,000 people the majority of which were already Christian. And conversions like this are common in Uganda. For example, elsewhere in Uganda, a school was attacked the following week. Its crime? Taking in children who had been abandoned by their parents for converting to Christianity. Morningstar News reports, Among the 173 children from eight districts, 57 were converts from Islam, he said. Another seven children were Muslims who became Christians after they began attending the school. A 2015 estimate found around 35,000 Muslim converts to Christianity living in Uganda. Today, that figure might be around 50,000. God is on the move in Uganda, and people are leaving Islam by the thousands each year. All Islamists can do in response is threaten violence and try to pump out more babies. I doubt it will work. Jesus' love is more powerful than any sword or club. Muslims, instead of fighting against his love for you, reject your violent prophet and accept the love and forgiveness that Jesus has already provided for you on the cross. I have more videos on conversions throughout the Muslim world coming up, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to avoid missing any future videos. Thanks for watching.